We almost made it. Just let me log in real quick. All right. So for this demo, we're going to imagine we're the customer support team. And we're getting inundated with questions about all of our hot new releases on our open source projects. We're getting so many questions, we want to build our own customer support bot to answer all the most commonly asked questions. To do this, we're going to need to first check large SaaS models. Large SaaS models have an incredible amount of knowledge. But even our customers have run into the limitations here when it comes to data recency and the recency of those updates and the data these models have access to. If you look here, you can see that ChatGBT 3.5 doesn't give us a very helpful response to what is Spark Connect, a technology that we released a year ago. So our team's going to need to build a custom support bot. And we're going to need an AI platform to do this. Luckily, we have the Lakehouse AI platform. The Lakehouse AI platform is going to provide three ways for us to build a custom bot. The first is vector search, which is going to allow us to return relevant responses. The second is Lakehouse monitoring, which is going to allow us to monitor the quality of our AI application when it's in production. And then third is GPU serving for large language models, which is going to allow us to have fully customizable models with data security and at low latencies. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing we need to do is make sure this customer support bot can answer questions related to recent topics, like what is Spark Connect? Luckily, our team has a ton of documentation on this. We have documentation on all of these new features. And we just need to use that documentation to sort of help our bot along. This is where Databricks Vector Search comes in. Databricks Vector Search makes it super easy for you to index your domain-specific documents. Once you create this index, you can then use it to retrieve the most relevant documents for your, whatever question is asked. So let's see this in action. Here I am in Databricks. I'm just going to initialize my vector search client. And then now I'm going to create my index. Creating an index is just a one-line API call. All I have to do is give it an index name, and then two things. I'm going to give it my UC delta table that contains all of my document chunks. And then I'm going to give it the endpoint to my embedding model. That's it. Now, because the Lakehouse AI platform is data-centric, we're going to do a couple things for you automatically. The first is, for this delta table, any changes that come in, so as new documents come in and you chunk them, we're going to automatically sync that with the index for you, as well as we have a tight integration with model serving. So we're going to automatically embed your queries and chunks in real time. You don't have to worry about all of that. Vector search has you covered. So now let's go ahead, run this cell. You can now see we've created our index. And then now let's see how vector search really works. Vector search is going to allow us to do similarity search in here, where you're going to see I'm going to ask it a question and tell it the number of relevant documents I want it to return. So let's go ahead and run this. And then now I just have this cell to actually display them. You can see it's returning four chunks. And if I come to the top chunk, you can see, hopefully it's zoomed in enough for the people in the back, you can see that the first document I returned a chunk from oops, is this Spark Connect overview, which seems extremely relevant when I'm asking it what is Spark Connect. And if we actually look at the data chunk itself, we can see that it's explaining how Spark Connect works. Seems like this could have some promising results, but how does vector search work in practice? I'm going to use the new MLflow evaluation API that's been extended to work with large language models to actually compare a vector index prompted OpenAI model versus just a generalized OpenAI model. So that's what you can see here is I have these two models. One's generalized, uh, sorry, one is the custom model, so we pin that so it's first. That's going to be that vector prompted one that we just built that vector, uh, vector database, uh, as well as the generalized OpenAI one. So when I click to this Evaluation tab, we're now going to select our evaluation results. 
And when we do this, and I zoom in over here, you're now going to see that we're going to have a side-by-side -side comparison of our model outputs to see how they're performing. You're going to see the custom model, so the vector index prompted one is on the left. The generalized model is on the right. So you can see, initially, the first question is, what is Spark? And so it answered what is Spark correctly, both of them. You can also see the tokens and the latency associated with each response. But now that I'm going to a technology that hasn't been released a while ago, so I'm going to Spark Connect, released last year, we can now see that our custom model using the vector index is responding correctly. So this is saying Spark Connect is a tool that allows remote connectivity to Spark clusters. Correct. If I go over to the generalized model, it's going to be a little hard to tell, but this is actually a hallucination. It's giving the answer to what is a connector, not what is Spark Connect. So now that the MLflow evaluation API has allowed me to compare my models against a set of questions, I now have confidence in which is the best model candidate for me to deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy our new model, and I'm going to monitor it with Lakehouse monitoring. I'm going to come over to my dashboards, click into my auto-generated dashboard that Lakehouse Monitoring provides for me. Lakehouse Monitoring, as Patrick said, is a single solution across data and AI. So it's one way that you can monitor all your data and AI assets. Let me zoom in here for everyone. Uh, what Lakehouse Monitoring is going to do, it's going to crawl over all your assets. It's going to generate a bunch of quality metrics for you. Again, because we are a data-centric platform, we're going to automatically store all of those quality metrics in Delta tables in your account for you. We're then going to auto-generate a dashboard on top for you to visualize results. And you can also use those Delta tables to generate alerts if things fall below certain quality thresholds. The metrics that we provide out of the box are similar to these, so like latency and toxicity if you're monitoring a large language model. If you give us your ground truth labels, we can do model performance metrics. And we also support custom metrics as well. We'll allow you to visualize your metrics over time. And then all of Lakehouse monitoring is built on top of something that we call an inference table. Inference tables are, again, data-centric approach to uh, machine learning, which is saying we're going to capture all of your incoming requests, all your outgoing responses to your model, unpack them, store them in a delta table again in your account, and then you can use this delta table as your next training data set. Or you can use it to interactively query and debug a problematic response or any performance problems that you're having. The last thing you'll probably notice down here is there's this PII graph. We've extended Lakehouse Monitoring to support PII detection. Now, where this comes in handy is I don't expect this customer support bot to have any sensitive data in it. But it turns out some of our customers are putting in sensitive data in their questions to our bot. And this is a problem because we have compliance standards we have to meet, and we can't actually leak any sensitive data to third parties. So we're going to need to replace the OpenAI model with a private model. Databricks curates a set of best-in-class open source models for us in the marketplace. We can then load any of those models into the Unity catalog where you can use them across your organization. Once you have one of those models, you need to now deploy it as an API. And this is where Databricks model serving comes in. Databricks model serving is a low latency, highly available model serving solution, and we've abstracted away all the complexities of the infrastructure from you. I've gone ahead in here, and I've already deployed MPT30B, which is the recent release model, on a Databricks model endpoint. In here, you can see it's using the new GPU model serving, so it's configured with GPUs. And then you may have noticed this purple icon. This purple icon is letting me know that this endpoint is optimized. Again, for those curated set of models in the marketplace, we have optimized our solutions, including model serving, to give you better performance. And in fact, with model serving, we've seen customers get up to a magnitude, uh, an order of magnitude better performance uh, with these optimizations. Now that I've got this model deployed, we're now going to swap our MPT model with OpenAI so we can have that data security and we have our fully customizable model. So now if I go back to my dashboard, 
I'm now going to have it grab all the data up through today when I deployed it. And so now when I change my time window of my monitoring solution, I can come down and you can see on my latency graph that now we're getting much better performance that we've hosted the model ourselves. This is just an example of what you can achieve with Lakehouse AI. And these are just three of the features that we've provided. So again, we showed vector search so that you can get relevant responses. We showed Lakehouse monitoring so that you can uh, monitor the quality of your AI applications. And lastly, we show that you have GPU serving optimized for large language models so that you can get amazing performance and data security. Those are just a handful of all the releases that we've made as an AI platform this week. But we just want to give you a sample of that. And we're very excited and cannot wait to see what you all build with it. With that, thank you. And I'm very excited to bring onto stage Sai from JetBlue, who's going to walk us through how his team has leveraged the Lakehouse AI platform to build large language models. Thanks. <laughs> 